Hey everyone, before I get into today's video, I want to remind you to enter our Animal Crossing New Horizons giveaway. All you have to do is like this video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell icon. You can get an entry for every video we do from now through March 18th. Good luck, the winner will be announced on March 19th. Hey everyone, how's it going? Nathaniel Rumpeljance here, and Microsoft did something today I didn't even expect. They dropped the full specs of the Xbox Series X. This is no BS. This is no, um, you know, rumor or, or whatever out there. These are the exact specs of the system, down to the amount of RAM, down to how fast the, uh, how fast, how many cores, example, the CPU is. We got bus speeds and all that on the hard drive. We know pretty much everything we need to know to know how powerful this system actually is is and they also gave us a look at the quick resume feature uh, we're going to go over that as well but first off let's just get right into the official post this all comes from news.xbox.com so you know official crap we're going to read it they got three different posts going up today all about their next gen stuff one of them's just on terminology uh but we might go over that anyways just so you guys are aware but let's get into the actual official news um straight from the horse's mouth. A few months ago, we revealed Xbox Series X, our fastest, most powerful console ever. Designed for a console generation that has you, the player, at its center. When it is released this holiday season, Series X will set a new bar for performance, speed, and capability, all while allowing you to bring your gaming legacy forward with you and play thousands of games from four generations. Recently, along with the tech experts Austin Evans and Digital Foundry, we had a chance to take a closer look at some of the technologies that are powering Xbox Series X and talk to the team about the choices that we made when defining the next generation of gaming. We spent an entire day discussing everything from the console's custom processor and latency solutions to backwards compatibility and visual enhancements. Uh, the next generation of Xbox is defined by three primary characteristics, power, speed, and compatibility. Let's take a look at those features. The most powerful Xbox ever. Early on in the design of the Series X, the team was determined to deliver the most powerful Xbox ever, which opened a series of discussions about how to define power in the next generation of consoles. In past generations, power has been defined primarily by graphics innovation, from the transition to 8-bit to 16-bit, 2D to 3D, SD to HD, and finally to 4K. Today, gamers are demanding more and more games run at 60 frames per second with high visual fidelity and precise responsive input. Developers have come up with creative solutions such as dynamic resolution scaling to manage high image quality while not compromising on frame rate, but this is often done to work around the limitations and constraints of current generation hardware. That's all about the change with Xbox Series X. It's not just about making games look better though, it's about making games play better too. While the Xbox Series X will deliver a massive increase in GPU performance and continue to redefine and advance the state of art in graphics with new capabilities such as hardware accelerating ray tracing, said Jason Renald, Director of Product Management on Xbox Series X. We don't believe this generation will be defined by graphics or resolution alone. The team knew they needed to build a next generation console that could run games in 4K at 60 FPS with no compromises for developers. So, we're not going to read this entire post because it's, it's a lot of fluff and a lot of mumbo jumbo. Uh, but we're going to go over some of the key points. So it said, in order to support these needs, the team strengthened their long-term partnership with chipmaker AMD, which began working with the Xbox team over 15 years ago on the Xbox 360. Sebastian Nossbaum, corporate vice president and senior fellow, semi-custom products and technology at AMD, spoke a bit about what the team created to power Xbox Series X. Thanks to the focus on transformational design, again, they're using a lot of fancy words here, uh, generational performance uplift... <laughs> Seriously. Now it's up to the developers. The console ends up being a playground for technical innovation. This is due in large part to the raw power and custom designed processor powered by an 8-core AMD Zen 2 CPU with RDNA 2 class GPU. And we, we've heard all this before. So the, we're going to get past some of the technical mumbo jumbo in terms of um, the fancy words they're using to kind of fluff things up because that's what they always do. And we're going to go straight into the specs. And here we go. Here's the, here's the juice. We have 8 cores that run at 3.8 gigahertz, 3.66 gigahertz with SMT on, custom Zen 2 GPU. They've been saying that this whole time, but we now have the exact clock speed here at 3.8. Uh, we know the exact amount of cores, which I guess we knew it was eight cores before, but still, that's really, really good that, you know, you could argue they should go eight cores, you know, eight with 16, because that's kind of what Ryzen's been doing. But you know what? This is not, you know, for, for a standalone system dedicated to gaming, 3.8 gigahertz is, is fine. Um, 3.66, you know, if you have SMT enabled, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. Here's the GPU, 12 teraflops, 52 you know, CUs uh, at 1.825 gigahertz with a custom RDNA 2 GPU. That's actually a fairly top of the line spec sheet 
for a GPU. You know, we're not talking, you know, quite the, like the Titan, you know, you know, level of, of the 2080 series or the 2000 series. Uh, we're not talking quite, you know, at the the, the top of, of the, the the best of the best, the five thousand um, dollar, you know, quadros that are, not, are out there and stuff. But uh, we are talking about a fairly top of the line GPU spec, and the, I'd say the CPU spec is probably about middle of the road, but. Again, uh, games rely more on GPU than CPU generally. Anyways, uh, the die size, you know, is, is is there for people who care about die size specs. Uh, but the process is, is made with seven nanometers, so we now have that confirmed. They didn't go ten, they didn't go fourteen, they went straight to seven. Uh, so that's great. Uh, Sixteen gigabytes of GDR6 with a three hundred twenty megabyte bus. There were you know reports out there that you know it was eighteen, that it was twelve, uh, because I believe the Xbox. Um, you know, the Xbox One X is is 12, but this is 16 gigabytes of GDR6, by the way. This is the stuff they've been using in video memory on graphics cards. This is what they're using in general for RAM for the system. Like, you know, our my, my PC at home is an example that I'm editing this on. He's a GDR4. Um, that's the standard right now. GDR5 is, is trying to make headway into becoming a standard, but this is GDR6. This is like skipping that gen as well and going straight to what the super fast video cards are using and using that for the main memory, the main RAM of the whole system. So that is incredible that they're doing that. And I'm sure the PlayStation 5 will probably be using you know GDR6 as well. I'd be really surprised if they weren't. Uh, 16 gigabytes, you can argue, uh, isn't enough, but... Uh, I don't know who's arguing that. We know that some dev units had 22 gigs, but dev units always have slightly higher specs. So, yeah, 16 gigabytes, I think, is plenty. Uh, you know, on a computer, you know, you can run basically every game with 8. I know some people talk about 8 gigabytes isn't enough. It's enough if all you're doing is gaming. 16 gigabytes is plenty. Uh, so there you go. Especially if you want to compare it to the good old Switch. Um, that's a lot of memory. Uh, memory bandwidth is at 10 gigabyte at 560 gigabytes a second or 6 gigabyte at 336 gigabytes a second. That might again have to do uh, with SMT being on or ray tracing being on, ray tracing being off, etc. That could affect um, the speed of the band of the of the memory bandwidth. Internal storage is going to be a one terabyte custom NVMe SSD. Now we don't know if this is going to be the new 4.0 standard, which is just crazy fast, or if we're just talking about the fastest of the 3.0 standard. Uh, for those who don't know, what I'm talking about, talking about PCI Gen slots, you know, 3.0 versus 4.0. AMD brought 4.0 to the forefront, so it's possible that this is the fastest of the fastest possible SSD on the market. If not, it's going to be up there with some of the best SSDs on the market um, for the 3.0 standard. Uh, but one terabyte of that is incredible. I know some people are going to be like, oh, why are we not getting more than one terabyte? SSDs are extremely expensive, uh, so to see that they're going to go a full terabyte with that is great. And what's cool is the expandable storage, they're adding an expansion card sp slot where you can expand storage by up to an additional terabyte. You know, th these extra terabyte are probably like a hundred bucks or something like that uh, for you to purchase, you know, you know, at GameStop or Walmart or wherever. Uh, but so they're adding, they're adding an ability for you to make it up to two terabytes without having to take apart the system and replace the hard drive. I think that's really cool. Um, and they're not charging you for that extra terabyte, you know, out the box. You know, if you need that extra terabyte, go pick it up, but they're not going to, you know, force that price onto you. Um, IO throughput. You got 2.4 gigabytes raw, 4.8 gigabytes compressed. Again, that has more to do for developers than it does for us. Um, external storage, you can also use USB 3.2 external H you know, hard drive support. So you can still use external hard drives if you want. Obviously, they won't be as fast as the internal storage, but you know it's better than having to necessarily take apart your system and replace hard drives, which some people don't want to do. Could void warranties and all that. Uh, optical drive is a 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray drive, uh, which is fantastic. Um, not surprising. Xbox One X has that as well. Performance target is 4K at 60 FPS or up to 120 FPS. So the idea is, you know, it, they, they want pretty much every game on the system to hit 4K 60. Uh, and, you know, they have hopes anyways that some, some developers might go 1440p, 900p, 1080p, but go for 120 FPS in games that might need that, you know, more like Twitch shooters and stuff like that. Games could also offer performance modes where it's 4K 60 or you can go opt for more FPS but a lower resolution. Um, that is something we have seen on Switch quite recently, you know, for, from Witcher, uh, even, you know, Fire Emblem Warriors. We can start seeing that becoming a, a mainstay thing here on, on Xbox Series X as well. Um, so Digital Foundry and others, you know, do deep, deep dives. But there's just a few examples. Ray tracing off, ray tracing on, just to give you an idea of the difference ray tracing can make. Um, 
This is a very simplistic take, of course. It'll look, um, it won't be as noticeable in, in some more modern games. So I think that's why they're they're, they're hearkening back to like Doom here, um, and just showing you kind of a, a, a starker contrast in what it could do. But in more modern games, the difference isn't quite um, that dramatic. But again, it makes it look look cooler. Um, we assume that this is uh, something running on Xbox Series X here, um, in Gears of War. Um, it says Xbox One X, Xbox Series X. So let's see if we can tell. Xbox One X, Xbox Series Yeah, so, I mean, again, I'm not seeing a huge difference here. I mean, I'm sure if you look really, really close, you can see differences in how these textures work. Um, but, I mean, you know, it looks like a lighting thing, kind of. Maybe it's ray tracing on, ray tracing off. Showing a difference, I don't know. Um, again, a more modern games, it's going to be harder to tell difference. Um, Xbox Velocity Architecture. Um, every millisecond matters, so it says fast input scanning controller captures button presses as fast as two milliseconds, which is really, really good for a wireless controller. Uh, more responsive than ever before. Uh, titles receive instantaneous input via dynamic latency input. That They've been talking about that for a while. Redesigned a new input software stack with focus on latency. Um, HDMI 2.1. Um, you know, that supports 120 FPS, 4K, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, they've been talking about this for a while, the fast input scaling. In fact, they did an entire article on it. So let's, let's look into that. So here's their dedicated article to their latency. And again, latency matters. Uh, input latency does matter. And it's nice to see in all the spec talk that Microsoft's, Hey, look, we also are, are working on that wireless input latency because it is a thing. Most of us don't notice, but it is a thing, and it makes games more responsive. Fighting, you know, fighting competitions, notice as well, they often use wired controllers in, in professional competitions for a reason. They still might, uh, but 2MS is, is pretty good. So it says Webster's Dictionary defines latency as the quality or state of being present and capable of emerging and developing, but not now visible, obvious, or active. Now that I've finally gotten to use that hackneyed writing trope in my career, let's dive into what latency means in the world of video games and how engineers work on Xbox Series X working to reduce it. In the most simple terms, latency is the measurement of how long it takes for a signal or a piece of data to travel from one point to another in a system. For this article, we'll be talking about input latency, which measures how long it takes a signal to go from your controller to your console or from your console to to your display nearly always measured in milliseconds latency is a key element of the responsiveness and feel of the game um, there are many components to contribute to end-to-end -end latency and a long pipeline from controller to input to display for xbox series x the team finally tuned each and every one of them to ensure you have the most responsive and precise controls possible again a lot of this will be proven in testing um so yeah they they basically talk about here, you know, speaking of digital inputs, it should be noted that a button press is a digital input because it only has a one, a zero or one scale, which is true, kind of on or off scale. Um, so transmission time of the TV, variable refresh rate, TV latency. There's all these things, you know, the ultra speed to high. So this is where um, HDMI cable differences, high quality uh, HDMI cables do make a slight difference in input latency. I know that for a fact. Um, so that's something to take into consideration. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, you know, it's cool that they're putting a focus on this. Um, and again, they had one other article we want to look at here, and that was uh, defining things here. You know, it, it talks about auto lo low latency mode. This is just to let you know because these terms are going to come up a lot. Um, so it's part of a commitment to responsiveness for the next generation of console gaming. Xbox Series X supports auto low latency mode with capable displays. So your display has to be capable of it. Um, it fully enables your display's lowest latency mode when you start playing. Um, this the functionality exists on Xbox One consoles today, but they didn't really talk about it uh, for a while. Direct ML, and we all know what backwards compatibility means. Direct ML means Xbox Series X supports the machine learning for games with Direct ML, a component of DirectX. So there you go. Um, Harbor performance benefit over 24 teraflops of 16 bit floating performance over 97 tops trillions operation per second of four bit integer performance. See, again, it's funny, they give you this and then they give you a bunch of terms that most of us aren't going to understand, but this is really important for AI. And stuff like that for games that want to take advantage of it. Uh, direct storage is an all-new I.O. system designed specifically for gaming to unleash the full performance of the SSD and hardware decompression. It's one of the components that com comprise the Xbox Velocity architecture. Modern games perform asset streaming in the background to continuously load the next parts of the world while you play. And direct storage can reduce the CPU overhead for those I.O. operations. Basically, it's kind of like preloading a game in RAM. Um, and then like, you know, parts of the game. So when you're moving around, you don't have to see as much pop in and stuff like that or any pop in in some cases. So it, it's, it, it's really cool. 
um, technology, and they're just getting fancy terms for it. Uh, dynamically latency input is another innovation we're making to reduce latency for Xbox Series X. Again, that has to do with the controller. GPU work creation is Xbox Series X adds hardware, firmware, and shader compiler support for the GPU work creation that provides powerful capabilities. Um, hardware accelerated DirectX ray tracing. I think from you know at this point, we just need to see ray tracing in person. I don't think talking about it's going to matter much to you guys. Hardware decompression is a dedicated hardware component. Um, intelligent delivery, latency, mesh shading, native resolution optimized for Xbox Series X, parallel cooling architecture, project acoustics, quick resume, RDNA 2, sampler feedback, SDR to HDR, smart delivery, spatial audio, T-flops, variable rate shading, variable refresh rate, Xbox Series X storage expansion, Xbox Velocity architecture, Xbox Wireless Protocols, N2, 120 FPS. They, they give all these definitions. I just kind of wanted to show them to you guys. And the last thing we want to look at is this. Uh, this is... Um, their quick resume feature. And what's interesting about this quick resume feature is just how well it works. We don't know if PlayStation 5 is going to have something that resumes quite this many games. Um, but if you watch it here, it actually does take a few seconds to load games. Of course, you see you got, what, five games on screen there? So it just switch from one to Forza. And, then, you know, you're waiting a little bit as the Forza's, you know, screen is up. And then, boom, you're right back into wherever you left off in the game. They're going to do this again and I think go to Hellblade or, or, or something like that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ori, sorry. Ori, I think Hellblade. Then they go to State of Decay 2, if I remember right, as the final one. Um, so, yeah, it, it's really interesting technology. It looks like five games might be the limit, so you can suspend and resume five different games. Uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Oh, home. That's right. So I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, I think it's really cool. It shows uh, what's able to be saved. Um, and resumed you know you could do this on pcs you can have as many games open as you want on pc um, of course you know you get to a certain limit and then it, it kind of doesn't work anymore uh, but i think it's a really cool piece of technology i think it's really nice to see them showing off you know not just talking about the specs and not just talking about features but showing off one of the, the unique features that doesn't, doesn't exist in this current generation of hardware uh, that's going to make gaming more convenient and for people like me that used to i'm trying not to as much but used to bounce around between so many games a quick resume feature is really really cool so uh, i'm just glad to see this in in action here of course you know this is a still image and then they're just you know superseding it on top of the tv but uh yeah pretty cool stuff um you know it's coming out this holiday the, i think it's another big takeaway from this is that it is still coming out this holiday and that's important to emphasize in the world with the crisis going on and everything that Xbox is still sticking to the fact it's coming out this holiday. They are very confident in it. They, they are not delaying it. Uh, even if there's not enough system to fulfill need, which there usually isn't at launch anyways, Microsoft's going full bore with it. So I'm pretty excited over all these specs. I think that these are um, kind of what I expected, but it's nice to have confirmation. Uh, these are what I would consider definitely next generation specs. In many ways, they're better than the specs I'm rocking in my gaming capable PC. Uh, and that's saying something. And usually but when, when new systems come out, uh, they're usually still pretty far behind some of the best of the best gaming PCs. And while, yes, it's still behind the best of the best gaming PCs, it's going to be better than a lot of people's gaming PCs they have. And it's going to produce 4K stuff better than our PCs that we currently have do because everything is tailor made for it versus PCs that are that have to be multifunctional for a whole bunch of different resolutions and different use types. Um, you know, you can buy a 2080 Ti all you want, but you know, some people aren't buying that just to you know output graphics in 4K. And even then, you know, you, you might struggle to hit 60 FPS. So it's going to be interesting to see how, you know what techniques are used for true you know quote unquote true 4K, um, or if they're going to keep using dynamic resolution scaling or or checkerboard rendering or or what they're going to do. But I'm pretty excited. Um, I love technology. I love that we're getting this. It's it's basically Sony's turn to respond. Microsoft has been just releasing shot after shot after shot after shot um, for next gen, and we have a PlayStation 5 logo to compare it to. <laughs> so um, that's cool. We also know, uh, by the way, just as like a final note, Microsoft did announce they're doing a digital event uh, in place of their uh, thing. They mentioned they were going to do something before, but they've officially announced they're doing a digital event now. Uh, so that's probably where we're going to get the price for Xbox Series X and the exact release date. So, you know, pay attention to June. You know we'll be talking about it. You know we'll be streaming that digital event and, and, and all that stuff. Um, man, I'm excited. This is so cool. I can't wait to see how Sony responds because you know Sony has to have a response built up because PlayStation 5 is their next big deal. Uh, and Sony relies on that way more than Microsoft relies on Xbox. So, uh, Here's hoping that Sony uh, has similar 
if not maybe even better specs who knows um and a competitive price point we'll have to wait and see how sony responds but right now i'm pretty excited by all this and i want to thank you guys so much for tuning in you guys let me know what you think about the xbox series x down in the comments below would have been cool to see some more gameplay from it today but that's okay um they're just slow building that hype train. We know what the console looks like. We know what one game looks like for it, the new Hellblade game. Uh, we now have exact specs. We get to see what the quick resume looks like. And that might be it. We might not hear much more now until June. But that's all right. June's going to be the big blowout. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rovagents from this Hunter Prime. Drop a like on this. Leave a comment. Subscribe for more. And I'll catch you in the next video.